Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's guide we're going to be focusing on setting up your Discipline Priest ready for patch 8.3 Arena. This is going to be including an update on talents, essences, Azerite choices, the new corruption mechanic and also touching on your rotation and playstyle as a Discipline Priest inside of an Arena game. To kick things off, let's begin with talents. When it comes to default talents, they should look like this. However, honestly, Disc is one of a few classes that needs to be consistently changing a few talents depending on matchup and composition. On the level 15 row, there are two talents that should be taken depending on the situation. Twist of Fate is good in most matchups. It offers a big increase to healing and even damage when a target drops low. Now, for this one, for you to be getting value, your teammates or yourself are going to have to be consistently dropping low. So think heavy CC compositions. You get chain CC'd and you come out and your partner's low. Twisted Fate is going to give you that extra throughput behind your heels to help you quickly recover and turn the tides. Also, it's a great pick versus high single target pressure. So especially Cleaves, for instance. This will again give you that extra throughput to pump out those heals. This is the most standard and defensive option for this row. The other option is Castigation. Picture this as almost a middle ground between Schism and Twist of Fate. This is best when you're going to be having longer games where you'll need both healing and damage at different times. This is especially good against Dot Cleaves where a large portion of your healing is going to be coming from Atonement. So think, are you or your teammates going to be dropping low consistently to gain value out of Twist? Or do you need extra damage at the cost of mana and healing throughput? If the answer is no to both, it's probably a castigation game. Schism, now after the nerf, no longer modifies third party damage sources. So trinkets, azurite traits, essences. So it's just your damaging abilities now, making it not very desirable. All right, so moving on, the other variations in talent picks are on the level 30 and level 60 rows and are very simple to grasp when to pick up. On the level 30 row, if you're likely to be focused, then you're going to need Masochism. This gives you some extra healing on yourself, as well as also providing a damage reduction, a must have when being focused. And if you don't think you're going to be focused much, Body and Soul is the go-to, bring in Dispel Protection and Movement Speed for any target that you Power Word Shield. Last up for talents is as mentioned the level 60 row. The default here is Psychic Voice, which cuts your fear cooldown in half. Most of the time you'll be able to get good use out of this, even if you're not going to be actively pushing for fears onto the enemy healer. Whereas Shining Force is very niche, there are two main reasonings behind picking this talent up. The first is a counter to enemy positional defensive cooldowns, so things like Urban Wall Totem, Darkness or even Anti-Magic Zone. You can use this on your teammates to knock them out. The other use is when you're being trained and fear isn't going to be of much use. Classes like Death Knights and Warriors can break fears very consistently. Knock, especially on Z axis maps, allows you to get them off you for longer than a fear normally would. Now, moving on to PvP specific talents, this is where Disc Priest gets kind of tricky. Your default talent should look like this. All three of these talents are great in most scenarios. Dome of Light brings that big defensive cooldown on a relatively short cooldown that Discipline Priests lack. It's very rare you don't pick this up, but some good examples would be when you're facing teams with next to no burst damage. So for example, a Shadow Priest. Trinity is one you honestly ideally never want to be without either, unless it's some very rare case where you need to change two talents, but still want Dome. Even when you're playing 2v2 and can't activate the crit component, this just extends your atonement durations and increases your atonement overall healing by 20%. So it's great in all scenarios. Dark Archangel is our third default talent. When you think discipline, you think damage. This talent is the main reason behind that. Dark Archangel increases your own and your teammates damage by 15%. Great for when you're looking to be aggressive, which in most cases you should be. All right, so there are of course some variations. Premonition should be taken when primarily facing mages and to a lesser extent hunters and warlocks if you can expend another talent that is. 
when picking up Premonition, look to swap out either Dark Archangel or Trinity, depending on if you need more damage or healing in that specific matchup. On the topic of mages, still another talent you can sometimes pick up in combination with both Dome and Premonition is Purification. This is great when you're playing things like RMP Mirrors, where you need to keep your rogue out of crowd control to win the game, but again, it's very niche. Ultimate Radiance is again very situational. Ideally, you shouldn't ever need to play it in 3v3. It's a high mana cost and there are much better talents that you can take. However, in 2v2 versus things like double DPS, it can be taken if you're really struggling. Last up is Archangel. This again is taken in rare situations. Primarily, you'll want this against Death Knights in 2v2, where their damage is almost impossible to heal through without this. Archangel gives you that extra throughput in order to contend with those necrotic strikes continuously stacking up. Stepping away from talents now, let's talk essences. In 8.3 came a huge buff to the essence vitality conduit. This is a huge contributing factor in disc success right now and is one of the two major essences you take. Vitality conduit when taken as a major can be used on either yourself or a teammate to act as a pseudo spirit link, playing heavily into disc strengths of having very good passive AoE healing whilst lacking a bit on the single target side. I honestly cannot stress how strong this is on Discipline right now. The other essence in consideration for that major slot is the more aggressive option of Crucible of Flame. This is taken in the majority of games in 2v2 in specific, whilst being great when you don't need that extra single target healing in 3v3. With those major essences, you're of course going to need three miners, or well, hopefully you're level 75 neck by now at least. Your first miner is easy. It's going to be whatever one of the two major essences you're not playing with. Put it instead in your minor slot. So if you take Crucible Major, take Vitality Conduit Minor, and vice versa. To pair with either one of those, you're going to want Spirit of Preservation. This essence is great on disc. Not only does it buff your Shadow Mend healing, which is much appreciated, but it also gives you 10 Corruption Resistance, allowing you to then wear more of that juicy Corruption. And the final Miner you should pick up is Conflict and Strife. This just provides a great boost to versatility, which is just a very good stat for Disc right now. Whilst also, as a side note, the Formless Void can be a good pickup instead of Spirit of Preservation if you still want to maintain that 10 Corruption Resistance, but would prefer a more aggressive option in compositions like RMP or Jungle, where your team is playing Breath as a major essence. Moving on to gear now, in this section we're going to be covering stat priority, trinkets, Azerite and also everybody's favourite new addition to the game, Corruption. Starting with stat priority, it's changed a little for Disc now in 8.3. Both versatility and mastery have become a little more appealing, with versatility being your main go-to stat that you want to gem and enchant for, with haste a close second. Mastery is good for that single target healing, whilst critical strike due to it being nerfed should look to be avoided. Trinket wise, Disc has some very good options, and when I say very good I mean it. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw is a must have. This gives you mana, helping to combat some of Disc's mana issues, and it even does ridiculous damage, whilst giving you that mana back. If you haven't got one of these, get into the raid and make sure you coin it. The other must have trinket for Disc is the Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. This one is again a must have. In fact, you never want to play without these two trinkets. The Voodoo Totem is used as a very strong single target heal that can be used whilst locked out or before CC chains or in numerous ways. Just trust me, do yourself a favor and go out and get one of these as well. Azerite on disc is a touchy subject with a lot of disciplined priests having a very different opinion on what trait is the best. But there are three standout major traits right now. Heart of Darkness, Depth of Shadows, and Death Rose, with most Discipline Priests running a mixture of all three. Funnily enough though, it's not just major traits you want on disc. There is a secondary trait named Ephemeral Recovery. This trait gives you a huge surge of mana once you drop low. And we know mana is one of disc's major issues, and this just helps to heavily combat that. With this in mind, the recommended Azerite traits and pieces are as follows. Helmet, you're going to want to aim for the Corrupted Gladiator Silk Helm, with Death Rose, Depth of Shadows, and Ephemeral Recovery. Shoulders, you have two options. If you need mana, the Gladiator Silk e Paulettes, with the mana trait, depth, and last gift, giving you that extra mana regen. If you prefer some more throughput, the Void Ascendant Mantle is going to give you depth, 
and Heart of Darkness. For chest, the robes of unreality are going to be your best option. Death Rose, Depth of Shadows, and once again, Ephemeral Recovery. Perfection. Now we've got the thing I love the most, Corruption. Totally balanced, not RNG at all, and just great fun. Healers, when it comes to Corruption, don't really have any specific healing corruptions in PvP per se. This means they're best focusing on the overpowered damage corruptions, mainly either Twisted Appendage, Infinite Stars, or Gushing Wounds. All three are very strong and deal nuts damage, so just get whatever you're luckily enough to have. Ranking wise, Infinite is the best, Twisted Appendage a close second, and Gushing is just overpowered damage per corruption value. So if you can fit it in, use it. And of course, if you're like me and don't have much luck with corruptions, there are a few other options. Versatility% percent and proc, and haste% percent or haste procs are all very good on disc, giving you bonuses to your favoured stats, but yeah, damage procs are heavily preferred. Although, as always, never go over 39 corruption when you're looking to play arena. Up next is rotation. Disc is obviously a healer, so there isn't much of a set rotation although there are a few rules that apply. Purge the Wicked is one of your main sources of healing. The best way to picture this as is like a Drid's Rejuvenation, just as a dot that you put on the enemy team. The more you have up, the more damage and in turn healing that you'll be doing, so you'll want to make sure you get as many up as possible. Next is making sure to penance off cooldown, be it offensively or defensively. Identifying when to do so is dependent on the situation, and of course this goes without saying, you need to make sure you have atonement up on targets taking damage, or your whole team if you've got trinity, which you should be. But the goal is simply to maximise your healing via atonement, so when you can, make sure you smite. It's not only damage, but it's also very efficient healing. It's also very important that you're using solace off cooldown. Not only does it do a decent amount of damage, thus healing, it also provides you with mana back. When you're in trouble, it's Shadow Mend that is going to help you recover. Whilst as Disc, you've got the goal of trying to avoid casting this when possible, unless it's to maintain your masochism. The more healing you can do with Atonement, the better off you're gonna be. Okay then, now you've got a good idea about how to set your character up, let's discuss playstyle. Disc is one of, if not, the most offensive healer. And the longer the game goes, the higher chance you have to lose more often than not. This means you should always be looking for opportunities to assist your team offensively, both in 2v2 and 3v3 alike. This can be either by assisting with damage or dispels during a setup, so an offensive penance, a solace, shadow fiend, or even looking to purge your kill target. Securing crowd control, be it onto a healer, or cross crowd control in another DPS, this could be including utilising mind control on low targets or targets that you're unable to reach to land a fear. Or as easy as just using your Dark Archangel whilst your team does a setup, giving them that extra damage. This leads perfectly onto our second point. As a disc, you need to be very alert on when you should be looking to play defensive. Playing offensive too long or at the wrong times can really set you back. Now, what I mean by playing defensive is switching it up. Instead of going for an offensive penance, use it defensively. Instead of pushing for a fear or doing damage, spam some shadow mens until you recover. And our last key point is knowing when to use defensives. Disc has Rapture, Pain Suppression and Dome of Light at their disposal. When playing Disc, you need to be smart with these cooldowns. Discipline lacks the quick recovery tools a lot of other healers bring. I'm talking about Sacrifice, Spirit Link or even Life Cocoon. So you have to use these cooldowns to not fall behind. For example, if a rogue pops Vendetta on you, don't wait until it's too late. Trade that cooldown reactively as to not fall behind. This in turn then allows you to get back to playing offensive. And that brings this 8.3 disc PvP guide to an end. If you have any more questions, be sure to leave a comment. Hope you enjoyed and as always, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.